When I was very young, my parents let me. The streets were a bad place to grow up. I had to beg for money every day for food. But begging wasn't enough. It wasn't long until I learned to steal just to survive. I created a gang with my friends. We would steal from people. We would take their money. I didn't like what I did, but what else could I do? My name is Jason. I am 14 years old. I am a former street child. If it wasn't for a stairway, I would still be living on the streets. Manila, capital of the Philippines and the most densely populated city in the world. There are 1.5 million street children in the Philippines and over 75,000 of them are found in Metro Manila alone. Many of these children either ran away from abusive homes or were abandoned by their parents. Due to the recent flooding in Manila, over 800,000 citizens have been displaced, greatly intensifying the issue of homelessness. This is our, uh, this is our kitchen. <laughs> but now, we cannot cook because strong rain, especially we have no rice, we have no money to buy rice, to buy food, because look, very traffic and water up to here. We cannot walk very well. Baha. Ano bang baha? <laughs> High tide. <laughs> Walking around Manila was a really interesting experience for me. It was my first time to see a city outside of one in the U.S. And it was very different from everything I had seen um, before. There were street vendors like everywhere selling bracelets and flowers and food. And there was also um, a lot of homeless people. You hear about it, but you never really think about it until you go there and they're everywhere living under tarps and boxes and kids come up and ask you for money. I was really excited to finally have the chance to be able to like go on the streets and get to know the kids and sort of see what they're experiencing firsthand. And I knew that just being there it would be a whole new experience, and it really was to finally be able to just see the kids and know what they're going through. Many of the homeless live in cardboard boxes and under tarps. Due to a lack of food, many also turn to drugs to alleviate hunger pangs, making substance abuse widespread among the children. In addition, pedophilia and child sex trafficking are overwhelmingly prevalent on the streets. Without major intervention, a long-lasting solution will be almost impossible to reach. Luckily, non-government organizations are stepping in to make a difference in the lives of these children. Stairway Foundation, based in Puerto Galera, is an NGO that creates awareness for children's rights in the Philippines. Stairway also runs a residential program that takes in 14 to 16 male street children annually. Lars and Monica Ray Jorgensen brought Stairway to life in 1995. What started as a simple vacation led to a permanent stay, 
after they realized how common children's rights violations occurred in the Philippines. Ever since, the Ray Jorgensons have provided a program unlike any other, emphasizing arts and theater in the rehabilitation of children. Throughout Stairway's history, the most challenging issue it has fought is child sexual abuse and exploitation, which along with child homelessness, has turned into the organization's foremost issue of advocacy. To give an idea of how overwhelmingly prevalent this issue is, 95% of stairway children were sexually abused before they came to the organization. Initially, we, we addressed very much the issues of conflict, of neglect, of substance abuse. And it was only after several years of working directly with kids that we realized that there was one issue that we were not dealing with uh, because we didn't know enough about it. We didn't know that it was so prevalent and that it is a sexual abuse and exploitation. An important aspect of the children's rehabilitation is group and individual therapy with Donna, Stairway's resident social worker. If you work with the children, they totally give you themselves. They will surrender you. They will really surrender who I am really. They will come into you and they will tell you, Ate, here's my real name. So once the child telling on you and you're not like begging and asking them the real information for themselves, it's just like, oh my God, they will turn totally that we trust you, we know that you can help me, and we know that you will let us go in the way that we can go really beyond or go really in our future. It is a sensitive issue, you know, and we have to help to change people's perspectives on speaking out about it and drawing it out. Um, it's such a taboo issue on so many levels, and if we can find creative ways of helping people to open up about it, to speak about it, and to not feel that it is something that should be hidden, then we would really reduce the incidences of child sexual abuse. From there, we decided that, okay, so let's bring this into the best form that we possibly can in order to communicate with as many kids as possible. And therefore, we decided to make animations. So starting in, I think, 2002 was probably when we started the first animation called Daughter, a story of incest. You must take good care of your father and the house. There was no other way. When she left, it was the beginning of the nightmare. He made me touch him, and he started kissing me. He told me that what we did was what all daughters did with their father. Well, shortly after we came out with Daughter, we started to work on the next film, which is called The Good Boy. And Good Boy addresses the issue of pedophilia. It is, um, it is not the story of pedophilia, it is a story of pedophilia uh, where we uh, see how somebody comes in, or a story that we've seen several times here, right? Uh, somebody comes into Manila, any big city basically in, in the developing world, uh, and establishes a relationship with uh, a child on the street, and that relationship leads on to, to an abuse. In 2009, we came out with the third and the last animation called Red Leaves Falling. Red Leaves Falling confronts the issue of child pornography and uh, child sex trafficking. It is portraying a reality that is so uh, gruesome that you know it is unsinkable, it is unspeakable. So it's um, it's really trying to um, yeah, it's trying to communicate the unspeakable. And you can do that through metaphors and animation. Um, we had the animations and they were quite powerful, but I also enjoy theater. And I felt to use the 
some of the stories um, that I had written, the Black Angels Cre Children's Realities, to create a theater piece with that. And so A Good Boy and, uh, and Red Leaves Falling became a part of Cracked Mirrors. Cracked Mirrors has traveled globally, inspiring audiences in Europe and Southeast Asia to create dialogue, awareness, and advocacy for the issue. Nightmares, they don't change. They don't go away. They persist. But um, having those performers to actually they themselves to tell their own stories and in front of an audience. So this is how Crack Mirrors um, began to evolve into this uh, theater piece. Super powerful, um, leaving an indelible mark on anyone who watches it. After watching Crack Mirrors, I remember feeling this, this guilt. This guilt because I couldn't connect with the actors and actresses on stage. Um, and Adi Monica, she had the foresight to recognize um, that some of us might be feeling guilty and um, she told us that that's an acceptable reaction but rather she would prefer us walking away feeling touched and aware rather than guilty. So along with, um, along with developing the animations we also developed workshops and trainings that were designed in order to have other institutions, government, non-government, approach the issue of child sexual abuse. Stairway has partnered with the Philippine National Police Academy to train officers before they're sent out into the field. During the program, officers are taught to understand the difficult lives street children face and how to deal with them in an encouraging and helpful manner. Well, you know, uh, in the past uh, we have uh, received complaints of policemen uh, hurting uh, children especially those who are, we call in the local term, Pasaway. Uh, so, uh, with this experience now, uh, this uh, new learnings, uh, they will have a different uh, point of view. They will uh, know that uh, these children are not really that uh, criminal and that they are victims of society. So I think that's the, that's the transformation that uh, they learn in the new curriculum. Stairway also runs a residential program that takes in 14 to 16 male street children annually. We run a um, residential program that we like to call a family home program. When we call a family ho home, it's, uh, it's because uh, one thing that the kids that we're dealing with have been deprived of is the sense of family. Family means love, attention, support, and the kids that we are having here in the program, they have uh, experienced pretty much the very opposite of that. This is Michael, a 10-year-old boy from the streets of Manila who joined Stairway's program in June 2012. Michael and the other 13 Stairway children are woken at 5.30 each morning by their house father. After completing their chores, which range from sweeping and cleaning to helping prepare meals, the children head to breakfast to eat alongside the stairway staff. Following each meal, the boys help wash dishes as part of stairway's mission for self-reliance. Next comes Matt, Michael's first class of the day. Most of the children had little or no formal schooling before coming to stairway. By the time they leave the program, most have skipped multiple grades and are on the same plane as their educated peers. However, school is not an option for everyone in the greater Puerto Galera area. In fact, many teenagers are not able to attend due to their location. Cab rides are simply too expensive and it's too far to walk. This year, 91 students are attending the local high school on a scholarship from Stairway. With so much value placed on education, Stairway sought to assist the children of the community at large. Stairway now offers a jeepney ride to and from school, pays high tuition fees, and provides lunch money to students who otherwise would have finished their education at age 14. After class, Michael heads to lunch, where everything served is both organic and locally grown as part of Stairway's Community Assistance Program. Yeah. 
Another component of the program is Stairway's feeding project at Beck Lion. Here, Stairway grows vegetables, fruits, and raises livestock. All of the produce is organically grown with compost taken from Stairway's main site. This produce is used to provide lunch every day to the indigenous children at the nearby school. Since the introduction of this program, school attendance and enrollment has skyrocketed. Last year, the Beck Lion Mountain School's enrollment was 118 as of March. Since January 2012, the enrollment has increased to almost 200. Compared to last year's enrollment, our attendance is good this school year, particularly because of the feeding program. Because in their home, they have no food to eat. But here, in Baklain Mangyan School, because of the feeding program provided by the Stairway Foundation, so they are, most of the time, they are in school. It helps. It really helps. For these children, the Mangyan, uh, children, that's the name of the indigenous group is called Mangyans. Uh, the Mangyans are um, very much exposed, are very much, yeah, very much exposed to discrimination. The feeding program is really a means to reach a goal, which is to, or well, partly to have the kids go into school, empower them to you know, get not only through elementary school, but also to enroll into high school and you know somehow become professionals that can help to change the, the status of the group of people that they belong to. Next comes art, where Stairway encourages the kids' rehabilitation through creativity and positive self-expression. really cool seeing the Stairway Kids and the Stairway Project Kids interacting for the first time. The Stairway Kids were teaching them how to make bracelets and dream catchers and how to tie-dye shirts and things like that. And it was just, it was like seeing two different worlds come together. There was a lot of laughter and happiness and uh, lots of kids playing ninja, tag, drawing, painting. It was great. Three times a week, the boys take a bus to a soccer field where they play against other local kids. By extending the family atmosphere that Stairway provides into a team one, the children are constantly surrounded by their own support group that they learn and grow with. Even with all that these boys have been through, in the end, it's still about having fun. Whether it's sailing, soccer, or just playing on the beach, Stairway keeps the children busy for their every waking minute. It makes sense, with the goal of rehabilitation in mind, to ensure the kids, instead of reflecting on the past they have escaped, can enjoy the present that they now have. Stairway's efforts to alleviate homelessness are effective, but the problem extends far beyond the 14 to 16 children in the program. With child sex trafficking as a billion dollar industry, and millions of children living in the streets, we must accept the realities of the situation before we can make a difference. Likewise, when we take children who grew up with nothing and give them opportunity, they can flourish and contribute greatly to society. It's now up to us. We can sit back and worry about our own communities, but silence is acceptance. Just because these children are halfway around the world does not mean they are beyond our reach. It's not just our goal, it's our responsibility to help. With your help, we can do so much more. It's time to stand up and break the silence.